Good evening, I'm Jonathan and I'm with my co-host Lee and welcome back to the LFC crew. Tonight, we have another special guest for you on the show. He is former Santos, former Orlando Pirates, former Sundown striker slash midfielder and big Liverpool fan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. So welcome to our show. Um, it's a great honor to have you actually on our show. And basically, so we will just recap what we will be doing today. Um, we will basically just speak about Liverpool and what's happening with 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 Liverpool. And seeing that you you played basically for Santos, you played for for Pirates, and you played for Sundowns. So you basically played as a winger, a striker, and a midfielder. So that's just, that's actually what we're covering today. We want to explore the attacking options today. Um, so, with Liverpool's current form that, that's happening, what, what is, it the, is it the, we know Liverpool basically experienced injury crisis, right? Um, but what is the reason for the dip in form and also Liverpool not scoring as much goals as they used to? Yeah. Well, uh, well, Lee, firstly, I just want to say thanks. Thanks for the opportunity and... Uh... And uh, for the great work you guys are doing, I think we, we, this is something we need, you know, we need something for, for our Liverpool supporters, this side of the world, you know, to, to, to look forward to every week to, to enjoy. So, so thanks for having me. Uh, I think mine is, when you speak about Liverpool's dip perform currently, I think uh, personally for me, there's, there's only one thing that I can think of. And, and yes, people might say that, uh, you know, all the teams have, have, a, have an injury crisis. And I mean, I, I, watched, the, I watched a little bit of, of the insert you had with John Barnes last week, where he also spoke about, you know, the effect that the injuries have on this team currently. And for me, that's, that's basically also uh, uh, what I can think of, the dip, of for, uh, dip in form currently. Because if you, if you look at it, uh, last season or the past two seasons, if you look at where did most of our supply come from, to the strikers and yeah, I think there was the a wings. time when from the wings I think there was a time when Trent was even competing with, with, with Kevin De Bruyne for, for, yeah. for the most assistant season so now if you look at that currently with our, our, our centre backs not being uh, or, or being injured you know Jordan Henderson and, and Fabina had to move to, to, to the central uh, defence position but before Trent and, and Robinson, they could move forward without even worrying to, 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 or thinking about going back because they knew if something happened, there was a Van Dijk, there was a Gomez that could cover. Yeah. So they could go forward freely without even thinking twice. But because Van Dijk and Gomez is not there, now you've got, if it's not the Phillips boys, the two young boys playing there, uh, you've got two inexperienced centre-backs, which... Space wise they're not up there. So it's difficult for, 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 for you as a wing back or as a attacking fullback to go forward whereby you know when the ball goes there, you're not hundred percent sure the, the new guy that's playing centre back is going to cover for you. And we found it out that, you know, once they play the ball over the top, you know, our centre backs don't have the speed to get back. So obviously now you find you as a fullback, now you think more of I need to defend first because I don't, I'm not, not feeling comfortable with the guy that's behind me as before. Because when Van Dijk and Gomez was there, they just went because they know Gomez and Van Dijk, they've got the pace they can yeah. cover. So now what happens is, and, and a few weeks back, they showed something about Trent normally when Van Dijk was playing, or, or Gomez is normally on Trent's side. When Gomez was playing, you find that the, immediately when Liverpool win the ball, Trent would go on his bike. And he would get the ball, by the time he gets the ball, the space between the opposition defense and the goalkeeper is a massive space. So he could play the balls into Salah or Mane in order for them to attack the ball. Yeah. And also, I mentioned the, 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 the two central defenders. And also because Jordan Anderson got taken out of his midfield position. Because remember, our main game is we win the ball as quickly as possible. When you win the ball, we try and play as quickly as possible. That's why you find when Van Dijk and Gomez was playing, 
Trent was always on his bike. We used to win the ball. We give the ball to him early enough. So at least now he could give the ball to Mane and Salah in space. But now because of the difference in centre-back pairing, he's not getting the balls early enough. Now he's a little bit deeper. I'm not sure if it's a, if it's a tactical change where the coach told him, listen here, the two central defenders, maybe they're not that uh, on the same level as Van Dijk. So maybe hold a little bit back. Because now you find that, that the trend in the build-up, he's not going forward as fast as possible. He's a little bit slower going forward. So when Trent gets the ball, immediately you'll see that the opposition defense, they're already organized. Yeah. Whereby before, yeah. they were unorganized because we could win the ball quickly, we give it to him, and the, the, the defense is still unorganized. So now you find that most times Trent will cross the ball currently, but the defense is organized so they can cut out the supply quickly. Same thing on the other side, you know. So our fullbacks basically, they're a little bit held back because defensively, we're not that great at the moment. So now our two fullbacks are not pushing forward as much as they, as they were before. So now you can already see before our fullbacks were our main suppliers. Now that supply has been cut a little bit because mm -hmm. as, a, as a defense, we're not comfortable. So those two guys, they're not comfortable in going forward as often and as much as possible. So which means on, yeah. for my side, the injuries do play a big part. And by saying, yeah. by saying that, same thing with Jordan Henderson. I mean, Jordan Henderson is, 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 is the main reason why Liverpool can win the ball back quickly. You know, you win the ball back quickly, you'll give it to Mane, you'll give it to Salah. And that's how we catch the team also when they're unorganized. Because remember, when teams attack, that's the time when they're most vulnerable. Because now they're pushing numbers forward. And before... Yeah. We used to win the ball back. Jordan Henderson, maybe not he himself, but he was always the instigator when he was playing in midfield to win the ball back quickly enough or to put pressure. Maybe the, the, they make a mistake to win the ball. Then at least we, we in the attacking third so we can give the balls yeah. to Mane or to Salah because we win the ball very quickly. And that other team was disorganized. But now we don't have a Jordan Henderson there. Jordan Henderson has been taken out of midfield, putting into the defense. So now you can already see because of our, our injuries, we had to shift players into different positions, which have an effect on our team. And that, that's, that for me sort of, uh, uh, is one of, the, it's, it's one of the reasons why we're not scoring enough goals because Trent and, 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 uh, Robinson. and Robinson, whereby before they used to yeah. most of the supplies, they're not giving a lot of supplies now because of the way we play. They're not going yeah. forward as much as they, as they were okay. before. Or maybe they're going forward, but when they get the ball, the, the opposition team's defenders, they're already organized. Yeah. Jordan Henderson is not there to win the ball back quickly for turnovers to give it to Salah or Mane. So that's also a, a problem. And that is also has been caused by injuries. Jordan Henderson needed to, needed to be served to the, to the back. And the other thing is, I think when we signed a, a, a Jota in, in the beginning of the season, I think that for me was a brilliant signing. Because obviously these guys have been doing well, our front three for the last three, four seasons. And when Jota came in, it was perfect because at least it, there was competition for, uh, for the front three places because of him. And he's, he was a player that could start. I mean, he's a Portuguese international. He scored a lot of goals. And I mean, when he, his first few games... Uh, I mean, I think in his first few games, he scored about five, five goals, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But then again, after a while, he got injured. Yeah. So you know the, the effect that all these injuries have on the team. And yes, you know, sometimes players go to dip in form or maybe they, they're low on confidence. It's, it's normal that that happened. But I just think, I don't think any other team in this league has have uh, the sort of injury crisis that mm -hmm. we have. Yeah. I mean, all our, all our centre-backs are out. We don't, we don't have senior centre-backs available, you know. Yeah. And because we had to sift our, our, our key players in midfield out of position. And the, and the issue is we play a certain way. And because our players have been sifted out, we had to bring new players in. And that sort of uh, created a little bit of imbalance in the way we play. Because if you, if you, if you, if you think about it, our team has been consistent. I think there's maybe about 13, 14 players that's, that's been playing consistently for the last few years. So to bring in new players uh, into that positions was, was a little bit difficult. 
you know. So, so I would say the main reason why our strikers is not scoring, firstly, is because of the, the injury crisis, but the effect that the injury crisis had on different positions and people being sifted out of position. Yeah, definitely. Tyron, we, we agree with you 100%. Um, I think it's evident for everyone to see that the injuries do play a major role. But on the other side as well, look, we, we're not conceding as much goals, right? Um, like you mentioned, um, our fullbacks are main, were our main attacking threat, but because they don't trust the centre-back pairing as yet, they don't bomb forward as much. And also, we, when we try to counter, our counter is very slow, and this allows uh, defences to settle. And Salah, Mane, those guys, they don't get the supply that they normally get. But then certain, um, surely, we have to start looking at the other way of playing. Because like you also mentioned, Fabino, Jordan Innocent was not available in midfield. And they're crucial uh, for winning the first and second ball back as quickly as possible so that we can play forward as well. But now we don't have those tools available. So... Do you think there's another way they can set up to bring the best out of the, the front three that we have? I think that's, that, that's obviously something that, 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 uh, that the coach at club. I think he, he has thought about that. Because obviously, you, we've, got, we've got enough players, but not the same player, same type of player, if I can put it that way. Because Jordan Anderson, he's the only one in Liverpool's team that can do what he's doing. You get uh, uh, Wijnaldum, he's the only one that can do what he can do, you know. So we have different types of players. So obviously, it's something that, that the coach have to think about, you know, in different ways of, 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 of playing. Because if it's not working, because like I said, there's a certain 13, 14 players that we've been using and there's a certain way that we've been playing all this time. So it's up to the coach to decide that, that you need to play a different way. You know, because again, we're not creating chances. And, and the other problem is that we've been having, we don't have, because now the burden is on the front three to score goals. But we don't have attacking midfielders or midfielders scoring enough goals also. Yeah. You know, I think the last, the last attacking midfielder that scored goals was maybe, I think Katina used to score a lot of goals from midfielders. Yeah. So we need our midfielders also to chop in with goals to score at least 10 plus goals a season. But now we don't have uh, 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 midfielders that can score goals or maybe defenders to go for set pieces that can at least score five, six, seven, eight goals a season. Yeah. So, like I said, you know, obviously now with the supply not being there from the sides and, and the effect that the injuries have, the coach needs to, need to find a way to, 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 you know, to set up, maybe set up differently in order to get these guys going. You know, because I mean, Salah is still, I mean, he's still the top goal scorer. So mm-hmm. it's not like he's having a bad season. It's just that there's no one else, no one else supporting him in, in, in scoring goals. So, yeah. so it's, it's, it's a tough job for the coach because it seemed like, you know, he's, he's, he's not one that, that changed too much in what he wants to do uh, or the way he's set up. You know, it's, it's an, and, and he brings players in thinking that they will do the same as, as, as other players and, and he believes in players. So it's up to the players that he's also giving chances to say to, 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 to take the opportunities to, to, to help the team and not overburden the front three that's been, uh, that's been fantastic you know, uh, over the last three or four years. Yeah, yeah but I also agree with you 100% there, Tyron. Um, well, just in terms of the way we play, um, like like we mentioned, you were like basically in all three positions, so you would know. Do the players need to change maybe their style of play? Maybe run into gaps a little bit more. What what's your opinion on that? Because at the moment, as we play, right, we just play with our wings, and if our wings get uh, if they blocked off, we basically have nowhere else to return to. As you said, as the defenders, they get they come back quickly because we're playing a little bit slower. So, do we change our styles maybe, run into gaps a little bit more, create more um, spaces as well, and pass maybe just a little bit quicker? I think, I think one of the, I'm not sure which game was it, I think he changed the system a little bit where, where he played for Mino you know, a little bit deeper into the, in midfield and, and, yeah. and Salah and Mane, and Mane up front. 
So again, like I said, it's all up to the coach, you know, if if if, if wants it. because now you can see it's not working. So he needs to change whether it's a different formation, uh, whether it's a different way of playing. Because even uh, I think people people used to like when, when now with Thiago, people say he's not the right type of Liverpool player. But I actually think he's the perfect Liverpool player, especially when teams are sitting back and 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 and, and waiting for us. Because he's a player, he can see a gap. He can he can see a pass that other players can't see, and he can make that pass because he'll pass the ball when, when the defenders or the uh, uh, defensive team they don't expect. So we need players that can create. Because unfortunately, if you look at even the way we play, we don't have creative midfielders. Yeah. Again, the last creative midfielder that we have that was creating opportunities was when uh, yeah. Coutinho left. The only other sort of creative midfielder, I think uh, uh, Curtis Jones has been doing well. He's one that, that can also create in terms of going forward and creating opportunities for the uh, for the strikers. Obviously, he's still young, so he's learning the game. But the other player that we're missing is, in, in my opinion, is if someone like, uh, uh, like Peter, you know, yeah. he's one, if, if, if he's fit with the ball going forward, and I think we haven't seen the best of him. I've seen glimpses maybe a year or so ago. Obviously, again with injuries, you know he's been he's been unlucky. So he's one that that if he's fit, he can create chances because the chances from our midfielders, our midfielders generally don't create opportunities for our strikers. You know, so it's either they need to work more on combination play uh, from our midfielders so that they can hit up the, the the strikers, or like I say, they need to find a different way of playing. But at the moment, the way we're playing or and the players that they they not uh, they're not, not creative players, if I can put it this way, because of the way we've been playing for the last uh, three, four years. And maybe this is something now, it's actually good that it's happening. So maybe it's something, to, if, if we go into the transfer market or for, uh, in the next window, to say, okay, let's, let's at least get different types of players for, for different ways of playing. Because, I mean, we can see if Jordan Henderson is not playing, we're struggling in that field. We're not the same team, and we can't play the same way as when he's there. So maybe get another Jordan Henderson type of player in there, or maybe get different players to play different, uh, 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 a different way of yeah. playing. Yeah. Um, Terence, okay, so you were a striker when you were at Santos, right? So I want to know. Um, they say that um, attacking players, um, they go into each game, uh, with a clear mindset, things like that. Um, but surely, at the run we on, I mean, we scored one goal on Anfield, um, and it was a penalty against City. What type of effect does that have on our front line? Because look, um, they go to social media, they see all these stats and all these things that people say on social media. Does it really have such a big um, psychological effect on forward players? Because I've seen a few times we, especially um, Sadio Mane, where he, has, he gets into good positions, but then his finishing is like he's rushing his shot or something. Is that the psychological effect of not scoring and reading stuff on social media, reading the papers? Is it, is it that that makes them maybe miss chances because it's so much on their mind? You know, it could be because, you know, sometimes players are just human. You know, they, they, they make mistakes and... and uh, and sometimes it obviously, if you know you, you, you cost your team or maybe you, that chance that you had, you missed and now the team lose. You know, sometimes players takes a lot and, and for them it's, it's disappointing. So, so for, for, as, as a striker, it's all about confidence, you know, because your, yeah. each player in the team has got a responsibility or sort of a, a job description, if I can put it that way. The striker's main responsibility is you need to score goals. Now, if you don't do your job, in the team as a as as a player, and obviously you know you 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 will be a little bit low in confidence. Uh, you will you'll be unhappy because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Because each and every game when I went into as uh, as a striker, I wanted to score goals because that's my job in the team. It's not the, the goalkeeper's job to score goals. It's not the defender's job. I'm a striker. Striker is supposed to score goals. So now once you don't start scoring goals, you get a little bit low on confidence. And maybe this is. Uh, what what the guys uh, Salah not not so much Salah maybe Mane and, and and Firmino is going through because they're not making use of the chances that we that they get yes 
we're not getting a lot of chances, but sometimes in a game we get one or two decent chances and maybe maybe they fluff it. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. so it's important, you know, for, for, for strikers to score goals, to, to, to stay confident in, in, in their own ability. Because like I say, you know, they're just human also and, and, and mistakes sometimes do do affect you as a as a player. That's true. I also agree with that. Um, Tarrant, and in terms of our goal, our goal drought, what can we basically do to change it besides just the way we play? Is there, like, you will see some brilliant players, they will take up the, the mantle, like, basically, Gerard, he will take everything on his own. Can we maybe expect that from Salah or Mane? Or what is, what is there for the players to do just to end that goal drought and just to score goals? I think you know sometimes it becomes it needs to become a personal uh, personal sort of uh, uh, issue with you if you don't score goals and you have to like I like I just said now you know you can't you can't blame Salah so much because he's been scoring he's a top goal scorer in the league I think yes Firmino doesn't score a lot of goals but he gives us a lot in terms of you know the way he plays and and what he what he what he creates. But I mean, he also needs to, you know, needs to chip in with goals. And I mean, he's been in front of goals. He's he's been a little bit disappointing. Uh, and I think he'll agree with that because he, he hasn't scored a lot of goals. But sometimes he gets into into decent uh, uh, positions. But then again, you know, I said it earlier on also. The other te- other guys in the team, like the midfielders, uh, the defenders on on set pieces. If they can chip in with goals, it will relieve a lot of pressure from these guys. You know, yes, attacking players are there to score goals, but what happens like like it is now, where they're struggling to score goals, which means our defenders or our other midfielders can't help them out. So it, it, sometimes it, it doesn't have to be a, a, a one-man show or only the, the, the attacking players that need to score goals. The whole team need to take that burden and say, "Come on, guys, let's push each other. Let's see if I go up like defenders." If they go up for, for a corner, they can't just go up for a corner because the coach told them, listen, listen here, you need to go up for a corner. They need to go up with the intention to score. The same, mm-hmm. like I said now, uh, strikers, they go into a game with the intention, I want to score. Now, if there's a free kick or a corner, the defenders need to have the same mentality. Yes, they're defenders, mm-hmm. but they're there to also assist with us mm-hmm. scoring goals. So that will also help relieve some of the pressure. So if the, if the striker misses a chance, then at least the defender, if he comes on and he scores a goal, maybe the striker won't feel so bad because maybe because the defender scored, at least the team the team wins the game, you know. So so in a way, yes, strikers are there to score goals, but sometimes, especially through bad spells, it becomes a team effort, you know, and you need your teammates also to assist in, in that regard. Definitely. Now on on strikers or oh, um still, Roberto Firmino, right? Bobby is not your conventional striker. You are a striker, an out-and-out striker. For me, no. Playing position is striker, but Bobby isn't your conventional striker. If Bobby doesn't play, or if Bobby, if he has, if he's in bad form, our front, our front line just looks off that day, because he's the guy that makes stuff tick in front of him. Um, how do you replace what Bobby does when he's not there because he's an exceptional player um, and he's very unique in his playing style. So how do you um, replace that? Because remember, we played Bobby behind Jota once uh, with the front four, Sadio Mane and Salah. And that day, that didn't work as well. So you can't play Jota in Bobby's position because Jota won't do what Bobby does. Jota is more... Oh, no, you can replace Salah or you can replace Mane. But how do you replace what Bobby gives to the team? I think, again, I mentioned, I mentioned it earlier, not being there. Because we've been so used to playing a certain way and with the same players, that's why it's, it's, it's difficult because it's not like uh, there was different players playing in Bobby's position to sort of get an opportunity to to to, to link and play with man, with uh, with Salah and Mane. So it's it's either one of two things. It's either the coach changes the system when when Bobby is not there, or we get the player that can play the same way as Bobby, 
That's the only that's the only thing I can think of now. Because rightfully, like you said, if Bobby is not there, then we don't look like the same team. Because he's the main reason why Salah and Mane is scoring so many goals. Because of the yeah. way he plays and the way he draws defenders out of position and leaves the spaces in behind. So 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 we need to or the coach needs to decide. Maybe I need to change the system if he's not there. You know, if we change the system, then at least you know we can, we can, uh, we can, we can, we can, uh, we can play a different way. You understand? Uh, or maybe next, uh, you know, in the transfer window, go into the market and get exactly the same type of player as Bobby. So when he's not playing, then at least we know uh, it's not like a total reshuffle. That player can just sh- uh, slot in there okay. and do the exact same job. As Bobby was doing for us. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true though. You touched on earlier also on Thiago. Um, his playing style. I also think he's very unique. Um, obviously he's also playing a little bit out of position where they try to let him go to the back and also help defending. I think also or do you feel maybe the same sentiment as me? If Thiago has to play maybe a little bit more forward, he can create a little bit more chances. Also, with like you said, maybe unlocking defenders and making more then Salah and Mane can make more runs in and behind the defenders. Yeah, no, no, most definitely. I think you know it's just unfortunate that that he's coming to a team. Yes, I mean his first game. You know, we were most of our, our players were there, were involved, and obviously he got injured. And when he came back, you know, most of our players or our defenders weren't there. So we were not the team that that 100% where he would have fit in perfectly because now, like you say, maybe he's playing a little bit out of position. But I feel that if we can get him on the ball, because you see what most teams have done now, they know that Liverpool likes to play the quick counter and getting teams and hitting them on the counter. So what they do now, most teams, they sit back and wait for us. And that's actually a perfect perfect scenario for for a guy like uh, Thiago. Like I said, you, when the team sits back, you need clever players. It's either someone that can create something out of nothing, especially from a midfield point of view, and we don't have those type of players. We don't have a, 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 a player, a midfielder, that can go past players and can beat one player and play another player through. We don't have clever midfielders that can, that can make a pass. But Thiago can do that. Uh, early on, I said even Keita can can dribble past the play and create something. So we need to sort of, you know, uh, uh, with 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 Thiago, we need to get him on the ball, especially when teams are, are sitting deep. And I feel that you know he can do that job for us. It's just like I said, it's just unfortunate that he's coming into the team now where we're not at full strength. If we're at full strength with Thiago in the team, you we will see the best of him. You know, we'll see the player that we actually bought, you know. Because now also he's struggling the way we play because maybe he's, he's being asked to do things that he's not used to. I mean, you see in the games where when the, when the teams uh, uh, break quick, he's not one that, 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 that can run back. You know, you can see he's struggling yeah. to, 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 to defend, which is not part of his... Uh, 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 his I won't say he's not part of his job, but that's not what he's good at. You know, we need to get him on the yeah. ball and we need for him to create those chances, and he and he can do that. Yeah. I mean, he scored a few goals. I know he scored the, the one he scored. Uh, I think he scored one against City in the even in the league. He scored one yeah. against City from outside the box. So he's a type of player that we've also missed. So it's it, it, again through injury, which is. You know, injuries, you just are unlucky with injuries. I think sometimes when you first uh, come into the league or come into a new team, it might be difficult for you to adapt to the way they play. And sometimes players do get injured because their bodies are not used to, maybe they're not used to the, to the, to the Premier League. Uh, and certain injuries are just unfortunate. There's nothing you can do. But I think uh, uh, even after Ox's injury, the club, you know, gave him another year extension. Because they, they, they know the type of player he is and what he can do. Because people don't realize that if you've been out for so long, it's difficult for you to come back and get, get rhythm. Because 
Now you come in, you come in for 10 minutes, 20 minutes here, but you need games for you to get into rhythm and to get back to your best. And those players hasn't sort of been given that opportunity because uh, the other guys were always, uh, were always on form, you know. So for me, I'll still keep Ox, I'll still keep Keita, you know, and, and hopefully next season, you know, all of them will have a, have a good preseason and then at least we can have different options in midfield. Yeah. You know, like I say, sometimes injuries are just, you know, you're just unlucky. There's nothing you can do, you know. Uh, but I still feel that those, two, if those three have still been uh, fit this last two years, uh, it would have been a different uh, Liverpool yeah. because then at least we would have had different options in midfield mm-hmm. that, that at least, you know, like I said, Ox can score goals from, from the midfield. That's something that we don't have. Uh, Keita is a creator from midfield. Again, something that we don't have at the moment. So yeah. there already you see the two players that can that can add uh, 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 a different dimension and also value to 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 what we have uh, what we don't have currently. Yeah, definitely. Lee, do you still have any other questions? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Titan, um, so we we know where Liverpool the position we are now. We are eighth in the league. We're still going in the Champions League. This is recorded on a Wednesday, people. So it might come out <laughs> Friday. <laughs> Friday. It might come out, sorry. Right? So, Titan, with regards to Liverpool's prospects this season, because of all, everything that's happened, come May, what do you expect where Liverpool must be and or at least what can they salvage from the season with everything they face? We need to get into the Champions League spots, eh? We need to uh, we need to get into the top four. I think uh, we need to win as much games as possible, which uh, obviously is going to be difficult uh, at the moment. I think Chelsea's foot, and they 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 look like they're not going to slow down in terms of winning games. Uh, so you know, it's 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 up to us. You know, sometimes you can only do what you can. You know, focus on on on, on what you can. Other teams winning or losing, that's out of our hands. So, if you know, if we win enough games, uh, you know, we I think we can still sneak in there, but you know, we need to win enough games for us to, to at least give us an opportunity to, to get into the top four. But, uh, but also, you know, we're still in the, uh, in, the, in the Champions League, so so you know, that's another opportunity. I think we uh, we're quite strong and we're quite good in the Champions League. So so hopefully, you know, we, we can go, we can get another, we can get another star. Uh, hopefully in the next round, next round we, we <laughs> get another, Tyron, yes. We, we, we don't do that anymore. Last week, John Barnes was on and he said Liverpool is winning Chelsea 2-1. So we don't do predictions anymore. <laughs> we are done with predictions. <laughs> we are done with predictions. No, no, we... You can't. <laughs> we have to. So, we have to. We have to be confident in our team. I think we we we've been. Uh, they've spoiled us over the last few years, you know, and we, and we need to keep on pushing them and keep on keep yeah. on uh, uh, supporting them. So, but yeah, I think you know, definitely, I think we can. We, we can still we can still do well in the Champions League and and, 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 and go all the way. Yeah, with ladies and gentlemen, that was not a prediction. There's a supporting your team. <laughs> Tyrant did not make a prediction. I'm just putting it out to the football gods there because we're very bad luck when it comes to predictions now. But Tyrant, I just want to say thank you very much uh, for doing this. It's very insightful because you you are an attacking player, so you would know what goes through attacking players' minds when it's uh, a, t- a difficult time like this. So your insight was very, very um, um, helpful, and we thank you for the opportunity once again. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tyron Aronsa, former Santos, Pirate, and Sundown striker, and midfielder. He did the Steven Gerrard. It was Steven Gerrard <laughs> later in his career. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that's the LFC crew.